Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. And this one is about mechanisms of pain modulation. So when we use electrotherapy uh, agents, we need to understand the, these um, basic mechanisms that will inhibit pain, okay? So first of all, we regarding the peripheral pain pathways we have basically two types of afferent neurons which transmit nociceptive stimuli we have c fiber which are unmyelinated fibers and we have a delta fibers uh, this one here at the bottom a delta are myelinated and is they have a small caliber fibers okay so c fibers are slow and a delta are um, uh, fast fibers so both fibers c and a delta they uh, detect the nociceptive uh, stimulus uh, in the in the in our skin for example we have cutaneous uh, nociceptors so those receptors, they are basically um, nerve endings, terminal nerve endings located in our skin. So they detect pain and both uh, C fibers and A delta fibers, they will carry uh, this information from the skin or from the muscle or from the viscera. They will transmit this information to the central nervous system. Here, uh, they enter the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. In this area, we have the substantia gelatinosa, which, is, which contains uh, interneurons, uh, which make the connection between peripheral nervous system and central nervous system. Okay, so the information will be then uh, ascend through the spinal thalamic tract to the higher areas of the central nervous system. So the gate control theory um, is a theory that says that if we have uh, nociceptive stimulus here, you see here in this car, pain, this is nociception. And this, in this other car here, the happy faces uh, are non nociceptive stimulus, uh, for example, mechanical stimulus. The thing is, pain is transmitted by C and A delta fibers. So C is unmyelinated and A delta is myelinated but with uh, a small caliber. Non nociceptive stimulus, this one here, uh, mechanical stimulus, uh, is carried, is transmitted by A beta fibers, which have like larger diameter compared to A delta and C. Okay, so the thing is, this non nociceptive stimulus is. Uh, is, uh, is transmitted by myelinated fibers, A beta, which transmit uh, faster the stimulus. So the, it goes faster. And that's why here you see green light. So green light, they go faster to the spinal cord, okay? And then they inhibit here at the gate, okay? So when they pass, the gate closes. So the gate closes for the pain uh, stimulus. So this uh, theory was first introduced by uh, Melzack and Wall in 1965. And they described that the severity of pain sensation is determined by the balance of excitatory and inhibitory inputs to T cells T cells, the inhibitory inter, the interneurons, T cells, in the substantia gelatinosa of the spinal cord. So, it uh, the the picture here is um, it it means the same that we saw 
before in the train, in the rail road, okay? So this is nociceptive stimulus, A delta and C fibers. They have a small uh, caliber. A beta fibers are non-nociceptive. They are thicker and they have more myelin. So the transmission here is faster than here. So these fibers, they uh, go faster to inhibitory neurons, okay, interneurons, and then they close the gate here to the um, nociceptive stimulus. Uh, so this is the gate control theory. And the, the other theory that also explains the mechanism of pain modulation used in electrotherapy is the endogenous opioid theory. This theory was elucidated like one decade later than the gate control by three independent groups of researchers. Uh, they discovered that specific opioid binding sites are present in the central nervous system. So let's focus first here in the picture A. So this is the nociceptive transmission. Normally, we have a nociceptive impulse that will uh, release substance P from the vesicles here. Normally, the substance P is trapped in the vesicles, and when there is a nociceptive impulse, those vesicles, they open, okay, and the substance P goes out of the nerve cells. Substance P is a neuro transmitter, which transmits uh, pain, okay? So substance P binds to nociceptive receptors, as you see here. So they communicate, these nerve cells communicate with another nerve cell, okay? Uh, and then nociceptive transmission occurs. So here, transmission of pain occurs. Um, what those uh, researchers, they found out that opiopeptins, they control pain by binding to specific opioid receptors in the nervous system. So let's focus now on picture B. We have uh, the uh, afferent nerve, uh, nerve here, full of substance P, okay, and we have the impulse is coming to release substance P from the vesicles. But substance P in this case is not released because, uh, because of the binding of encephalines to the nerve cells, to the afferent nerve here. So encephaline is an endogenous opioid which binds to specific receptors and inhibits the release of substance P from the afferent nerve. So there is no communication between this nerve and the other nerve. So we have a couple of other endogenous opioids uh, in our body, including encephalines, beta-endorphin, dinorphin. Those are examples of endogenous opioids. Uh, and the same happens also if we take a look in picture C, uh, we've end up exogenous opioids. So here we have also drugs that are artificial opioids. Uh, for example, morphine is an exogenous, exogenous opioid that uh, is also able to bind to this specific endogenous, uh, to this specific opioid receptor in the afferent nerve. And this also inhibits the release of substance P from the vesicles. And there is no communication and there, uh, with the other nerve cell. Therefore, there is no transmission of nociceptive uh, stimulus. So when we use uh, electrophysical agents, electrical currents, uh, there is st electrical stimulation of areas in the brain, okay, in the higher uh, levels of the central nervous system, 
including here, at the level of the midbrain, uh, we have the periaqueductal gray matter, okay, uh, in the midbrain. So this, uh, at this level, so of the midbrain, so this is basically where uh, the spinothalamic tract uh, ends. So if we compare the gate control theory, uh, the inhibition, the pain inhibition occurs in the ascending uh, pathway, okay, because pain is detected. Uh, in the peripheral nervous system, then it, uh, we have transmission to the central nervous system. And from the central nervous system, uh, from the spinal cord, it goes ascending the, uh, towards the higher levels of the, of the central nervous system. So this is an ascending inhibition. In the case of endogenous opioid, uh, opioids, this is a descending inhibition. Why is that? Because when this area here in the midbrain is stimulated, uh, so the neurons in this area, they are fired uh, and they induce uh, the release the activation of uh, noradrenergic uh, nerves. So these nerves will uh, go down here and also uh, release serotonin uh, and release uh, encep encephalines, which will be responsible for uh, inhibiting the release of substance P uh, from the afferent nerves okay so those are the two uh, major uh, and accepted uh, theories for pain control and they are extremely important to understand because uh, when we use tanks we will learn in another video tanks uh, uses uh, can inhibit or can uh, activate different types of fibers okay so that's it for now.